Welcome to Dare to Dream. This is Debbie Dashinger, and I've got a little bit later on Lana from Montana, <laughs> who is here, and she's going to be helping us about food, around our food, because if you're like most of the population out there who's bombarded by what to eat, what not to eat, why that changed, why now we can eat it, why now we shouldn't eat it, and you get really lost in the minutia and the majora of all the information that we receive, but maybe it doesn't really work for our body and we can't figure out why, wouldn't it be nice to know what's right and light for your body? Literally, what your body is asking you for, for fuel. That's gonna be our conversation today. And it is something that, because I have been through that process personally, I am a firm believer is the way to go. So first, just a couple of housekeeping pieces. This show, Dare to Dream, is a finalist in the People's Podcast Choice Awards, and I'm very honored to be there. And if you love the show, please subscribe. Just click below, subscribe to the show. It will come into your inbox every week. And also leave us a review. We love five-star reviews because it lets other people know who enjoy this level of transformation conversation where the show is. And by the way, thank you guys for writing. I literally read everything that you write. And I always try to get over there and at the very least give you a thumbs up and often I will write back. So thank you so much for your engagement and thanks for letting me know what these guests mean to you and what this level of conversation is doing for you. This show is sponsored by Dr. Dane here, H-E-E-R, Dr. Dane here and Access Consciousness. They do energy healing work all around the world. They do profound teachings and have profound products. So go to their website, check them out, highly worth it. And who am I out in the world? I am a media visibility authority, and I'll tell you exactly what I do. Everything I do out in the world, being in front of cameras, in front of microphones, I've been interviewed over 1,000 times on media outlets. I've written three international books. I've been doing this show for over 12 years. And you can do all of this and more yourself. So I coach clients privately and in groups how to write their book, how to make that book a page turner. I've got a company that guarantees the author will reach international best-selling status, and I teach you the ultimate visibility formula, how to be interviewed on radio and podcasts in 60 days or less without any publicity knowledge, and frankly, without having to hire anyone. I give you the entire system, so you got this. If you want to know more about that, go to debbid.net slash visibility, and of course, also my website, Debbie Dashinger. Dot com has lots of info on all of that. So what if you had food issues? Man, I live in Los Angeles, so I'll tell you right now, you got to eat. <laughs> it's so funny to hear people order because they will be very particular. Oh, could you hold that? Could you substitute this? Oh, I don't eat that. No, no bread at this table. And uh, I wonder how much you experience that or do that yourself. Do you have food issues? Is your body in some kind of pattern? Well, my guest today is Lana Nelson. She's a certified emotion and body code consultant. And she is author of the book, The Food Codes. And this book, well-worn, as you can see, teaches you how to eat without guilt, without shame. And it teaches you what your body needs for food at different times different seasons, and when perhaps there are stressors affecting your life. Lana teaches thousands of people every year how to heal themselves with food and has developed one of the easiest techniques on the planet, which uses emotional clearing and energy healing techniques, as well as quantum biofeedback technology. Lana is also a licensed massage therapist, as well as a Reiki master teacher who counsels in nutrition herbal, and homeopathic therapies. Her focus is on individuals, couples, and families who struggle with food, with health, and emotional problems. And if you would like to learn more, go to thefoodcodes.com. Lana, welcome to Dare to Dream. It is so great to have you. It is a really big honor to be here with you, Debbie. Thank you, thank you, thank you for the invite. So it comes to food. Here we are. 
And what I hear you saying is, it's actually about an inner wisdom, a body wisdom. And I think that's interesting because we live in a time that is filled with judgment about food. It's mm. filled with conclusions about food. And I think it can be very difficult. Should I be doing vegan? Should I be doing keto? Should I be doing the carnivore diet? Should I be doing low carb, high carb? You t- you're true. So so true. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. We are pulled this way and that way. Do this. Don't do that. No, this is good for you. Ah, that's bad for you. Same thing. So what do you do? You ask, this is what I do, what I sieved all of that down to. You do not have to be a nutritionist. You do not have to be an expert on anything. Just be an eater, okay? Be someone who eats. And and you can even change that if you're an overeater or an undereater or, you know, you don't like to cook or anything. In my book, The Food Codes, I really teach you how to tune in to your inner wisdom so that you can ask the expert T-H-E, the the expert yourself, what it is that you need. And with, like you said, it could be your foods could change from time to time, a stress in your daily workload, a stress in the seasonal changes, and anything under the sun. So the only person that knows, or the only one that knows exactly what is good for you today, right now, is you. So I teach you how to tune in to that inner wisdom. That's and so I, we can talk about that. I want to, and I want to know, so somebody comes to you, whether they have a problem or is just like, I'm curious, like what's happening with my body? What should I be eating? How do you work with somebody? Well, I first just uh, very simply, um, my intuition or my inner knower, if you will, can tune in to their inner knower. We are all energy beings, light beings, energy beings, everything that is, is energy. And that's been proved by quantum physics. Um, We're vibrating frequencies. The microphone you have in front of you is a solid or appears to be solid. You could tap on it and you could hear it, but you can't visibly see through it. However, it is vibrating energy, vibrating at a very low rate of speed that um, it appears solid. So food, same thing, but our thoughts are also vibrating energies, if you will. So, and our intuition, our inner knower, which is our, like, it's a record on button. When we come into this world, and maybe even before that, the record on button has been pushed. So our inner wisdom, our subconscious mind, which keeps track of everything, we don't have to, we don't have to do anything for it to work, okay? We don't have to be conscious of it at all. As a matter of fact, our consciousness is very little. We forget everything. If you ask, what did you have for dinner last Tuesday? It's like, what do you mean last Tuesday? When was that even? So we're in such a busy world. But our inner conscious, our inner subconscious knows. So working with a person one-on-one, um, either at a distance or with them, I basically tune in to their subconscious, their inner knower with my inner knower. And how that is a super duper easy thing. Some people have, they, they're they're conscious of their inner knower. They're, they can actually see, feel, or hear things with their subconscious mind. Other people, it's like, I don't know anything about that. But how you tune in with your subconscious is by uh, an, a method called kinesiology or muscle testing. A lot of practitioners are using it these days. Old times, ancient times, they called it dowsing. They would, you know, douse for water or douse for on, on a piece of property. Where do we dig a well? And that in ancient, it's what's been used since ancient times. And modern day, a lot of practitioners, energy workers, as well as neurologists and um, physical therapists use the method of kinesiology or energy testing. So long story short, I can test myself as a surrogate for someone else if they are are, are at a distance. And how I would do that is by testing a strong or weak muscle. One method, now I give you lots of methods in my book, 
And I also give um, pictures and really good descriptions. But one method I use is my finger. And I hold my index finger out straight, bring my middle finger over top, and my intention is to have a strong yes or a weak no. So I say, Tell, give me a strong yes and lightly press down and just feel as it stops and then stop pushing. Okay, that's your yes answer. Then say, give me a weak no and push down and see, you can't even hold your finger up. It is a no. So that's one way that I tune in to my subconscious. And I can then, with your permission per se, uh, your permission, I can tune in with your subconscious and say, do you, um, are apples a good food for you? Yes. Are bananas a good food for you? No. Uh -huh. So I can do that sort of a thing. So that's how you would tune into that inner knower that does know your best foods. It knows your worst foods. It knows if you say, yes, bring the bread on over to the table or anything like that. You bet. Oh, that's fantastic. The, you know, there's so many different ways to muscle test for those who know about it. And I think a lot of this audience does. And obviously, you know, you can go to somebody and they can do this method or, you know, there's, there's this, give me a yes, give me a no. Kind yes. of thing. I really like that. Um, that's a new one for me. I'm going to try. Okay. That. No one will know what I'm doing. You know, exactly. You can, you can be out shopping. You can be standing in a food line, you know, standing in a buffet line and you have your little hand next to you and Nobody knows that you're testing this. Oh, that. Okay. That's the beans test. Really good for me. Oh, that casserole is it. No. So yeah, you can do that. That's amazing. And especially because you mentioned it changes. So this is not a static thing. You don't get a read. So for instance, let me show people what it is you create. So I've worked with Lana and of course mine's not color, but you can get a color read out of this. But I mean, Look at these pages of all kinds of foods that you get back and front, back and front, back and front. So this is many pages, very, very, very detailed. And so this changes. So it's good to get uh, to check back in. And clearly there's some healing that goes on uh, over time. And there are certain foods that maybe you couldn't tolerate that you become tolerable of. So true. For instance, uh, let's just take one of my clients. She um, had a lot of body pain. She was underweight. She needed to put weight on. And this had been going on for a long, long time. She had inflammation and you name it, she had been diagnosed with it basically. And so her food, her first food code plan was fairly minimal. It wasn't a lot of foods, but she was, a, she stuck with it. And at first, here's what happened at first. She was terrified that it was a diet. Mm -hmm. So she didn't even want to do it. It's like, diet and then you just run away run away and because we've been groomed since before our grandmothers to diet so we live in that diet mentality one thing that the food codes intuitive eating for every body is not is a diet it is a way of life it it relieves you from the stress of dieting because you can actually use your wisdom as you go. Mm -hmm. and But you can also test in advance. So using that uh, food codes to test in advance. And so my client and her first test, uh, she had just a few fo foods and she was very, very good about it. And I think it was just a uh, two, three, four weeks, something like that, that she needed to stay on that particular plan. And I said, this is not a diet. If you want to eat something else, go right ahead. Allow yourself to do that. Your body will tell you by how you feel. And she said, you know what I did when I stuck with it, I felt good and it was freeing when I didn't. Ugh. She said some of that discomfort came back. But anyway, her next food uh, plan a few weeks later were, was broader. Her last food uh, food codes plan, she could eat almost anything. Wow. Okay. She literally could eat almost anything, of course, with wisdom, but it broadens your, uh, so her body eating the right foods was, should we say medicinal and healing for yep. her? So you've heard of foods as medicine. It is really true. Yeah. Thank you so much. That makes a lot of sense because I have had experts on this show, speaking of quantum science, who say the 
body is a self-healing mechanism. Mm -hmm. So you just put that together for me, that when we put the foods in, our body is actually asking for, it can rejuvenate, it can refresh. And I yes. just want to tell the audience that we are going to take, we are going to have uh, people come on. I'm going to keep it minimal because I really want to have um, yummy conversation with Lana, but we, I really want you to experience her reading and I want to gift a couple of people with the experience so you can see what's possible and how different Every, I assume everybody's body is going to be. Um, you've got a, a quote in your book, which is, what about guilt? Ever beat yourself up for how you look or what you eat? Ever compare yourself to others and feel ugly? Thinking negatively about your appearance, eating patterns, or weight adds loads of stress and sends you scurrying for a glass of wine and jumbo order of nachos. So, so true. Because we get really stuck in this perpetual... Um, self-judgment, right, about how we look and what we're eating and what and what we're not eating. And so you have a lot of people, it sounds like, who have come to you and been able to step out of that and step into instead the idea of being fully healed around food. Yes. Yes. And if you think about it, one of my, um, one of my sayings is do your best and bless the rest. Okay. So not judging yourself, not judging food, not judging others for what they're eating or how they look, etc. Do your best and bless the rest is my, is my mantra, basically, my motto, if you will. Do your best, bless the rest. Beautiful. And that's blessing means give thanks, give gratitude. It doesn't mean that you have to be any particular, you know, religion or, or sect, but just give gratitude and thanks for that food. And you know what? Blessing, actually, uh, saying a prayer or a blessing, giving gratitude has been scientifically proven to raise the frequency of a loaf of white bread mm -hmm. to a good for you food per se. Yeah. So, that's so great. I just had this conversation with somebody the other day and she studies, she's a healer who studies a lot, the Dr. Emoto from Japan, mm -hmm. principles he had worked on scientifically around water and changing water with thoughts and energy. And yeah, and that's true. You know, I've gone out to eat with people where we've just put our hands over our meal before we've yes. actually ingested it. Mm -hmm. I know somebody who swears he can change bad wine into good that way. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go out with that guy. Yes. <laughs> so we've got someone here. I'm going to bring her on. I'm going to start her video here and unmute her. And this is Zhuja Novak and Zhuja meet Lana Nelson. Lana meet Zhuja and welcome to the show. Zhuja, <laughs> nice to, nice to meet you. Thank little hand, you. Little handshake here. Lana. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Great to see you. I am so impressed by your work and looking forward to learning more. Wonderful. Well, Zhuja, a, um, do you have any uh, questions about uh, foods before we start? I thought I would do just an example with you of a quick scan of um, in, in the food codes. I actually, uh, Debbie, showed how many pages that you really can. I give you lots of whole foods to test. And so number one, you, um, what we'll be testing today is whole foods. But number two, if you, uh, you know, you learn the system that you learn the, you know, the, the muscle testing and, or your intuition, you can test uh, foods on a shelf. You can test a casserole. You can test a, a, you know, a soup or something like that. So today we'll be testing whole foods. Sounds good. Any questions? No. Okay. Well, I did a quick scan beforehand, and um, I did test for you some of your top fruits and vegetables. And it was interesting because doing a food codes plan, you can actually see where someone might ha be having digestive trouble, or they might have some molds or funguses in their body. And I just in the food in the fruits section, just a quick scan of that, I could tell that your body doesn't deal well with too much sugar, or too many fruits. Is that true? Yes, that's true. I barely eat any sugar at all. Only in okay. the, in, only in the 
Fruit, in the form of fruit. Well, yeah. as I was looking at, you might actually have some some problems with eating sugar. So it'd be good to stay away because, well, and fruit sugars are different than like regular processed sugar. Yeah. But I find that blueberry and strawberry are really good foods for you. Those are your top fruits. Okay. Great. So, and and it was in the berries. So reg like apples, dates, um, grapes, and so forth didn't test as your top foods. So top foods would be like on a scale of one to 10 and eight out of a 10. That's what I mean by top foods. A right. neutral food would be about a four through seven and a bad food, a food that you really should stay away from is below like testing one, two, three, four. Okay. So in scanning vegetables for you, I actually found that asparagus, vegetables um, tested pretty good. Your very, very top vegetables for energy for you right now, and it is all about energy, asparagus, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, and those are in the same family too. Yeah. And I tested, let's, let's ask with uh, cabbage, is it okay for you to eat cabbage raw? The answer is yes. yes. Can you eat it uh, <laughs> cooked? Yes. So it's cabbage nice. as, and different kinds of cabbages are good for you. Red cabbage, green cabbage, etc. Then lettuces, testing lettuce. Oftentimes a person will just, you know, test for, oh, most lettuce is good for me or not so good. And <laughs> romaine lettuce is your top uh, healthy food for lettuces. And then also with leafy greens, spinach tested good for you. And sometimes you might need to lightly steam or cook the cruciferous type. And do you need to uh, cook spinach in order for it to be digestible for you? No. So you can have raw spinach as Great. well. Also found that onions, um, onions, garlic wasn't the best, but onions like sweet onions are good for you. And you could eat those raw or cooked, however you like. And then, of course, pumpkin and squashes, the orange types of squash and zucchini tested really good for you. And an interesting thing, um, I also have sea vegetables because sea vegetables are in the category basically of vegetables. Yeah. And you are testing that you really need some kelp and nori. And when I see sea vegetables come in, it, it tells me that you're needing some more really good minerals that your, your body can. And kelp and nori. Do you like sushi? Love. My favorite food. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Good for you. Bring on the sushi, the sea vegetables. <laughs> and so I tested vegetable broth for you. And it tests okay, but not really necessary. Okay. I also went through the, I'm looking at the dairy, milk, cheese, and non-dairy section and really found that you don't do really well at this time with dairy. Uh, even like fermented dairy is a one, two. So dairy and fermented dairy, not your best um, foods at this time. But I did find that Dubliner cheese and Dubliner cheese is from Ireland. It's an Irish cheese and it's kind of interesting. I found a good food for, for you if you're really craving the dairy and cheese would be Dubliner cheese. So kind of interesting and very fast forwarding. Um, I'm just doing some testing right now, real time with grains. And let's just check is, are you the person that says bring the bread to my table? And it's not at this point, like a white bread is a one, two on a scale of one to 10, a wheat bread, a little bit better at a four, but the bread is not as good for you. Um, your <laughs> top grain or bread, and that doesn't mean you can't have it okay it really doesn't if you really want some bread have it with some good <laughs> olive oil or a nice hunk of that Dubliner cheese okay because <laughs> when you when you eat a food that has a lower value and com combine it with a little higher value food your body can tolerate it better does that make sense <laughs> that's interesting yes absolutely okay so let's look at rice for you rice is testing as a good food uh, basmati rice black rice brown rice all testing good for you and um, sometimes when uh, sourdough bread oh gosh listen to this sourdough bread on a scale of one to ten for you is a one two three four five six seven eight nine so bring on mm -hmm. the real sourdough bread okay That's so 
And nuts, uh, just do a quick scan on nuts. Your best nut is a walnut. So sometimes you feel okay. like a nut, uh, have a walnut. <laughs> and fats and oils, just doing a quick scan on my list with fats and oils. Avocado oil is very, very good for you. I'm just going to bring my fingers into test. Um, canola oil, very bad. Chicken fat, no. Sometimes animal fats are excellent. Uh, Grapeseed oil, excellent for you. Hemp oil, not so good. Uh, peanut oil, very bad. Soybean oil, not so good. Um, olive oil, seven, eight, nine, ten. So those Yay. are some of your really good fats, okay? That's now, wonderful. are you a vegan, vegetarian, or do you eat meat? I don't eat meat. Okay. I'm a pescatarian. All right. So we are going to look at, um, very quickly, let's look at sweeteners, okay? Because some people uh, like the artificial sweeteners or uh, honey is a one, two for you. Interesting. Stevia is a one, two, so not very high for you. Um, uh, xylitol is a zero. You know, uh, I date. don't sweeten anything. That's okay. fascinating. It is fascinating because <laughs> sugar is not your thing, girl. Nope. Um, do you need some more salt in your diet? And no. If you were, so when you do salt things, uh, testing that Hawaiian, no, Himalayan pink salt, a very top food for you. Ooh. Okay, so Himalayan <laughs> is a great... And uh, let's just check a couple, let's check water, for instance, okay? okay? Do you need distilled water? No. Do you need a mineral water? Yes. Now, minerals, knowing that, so mineral water would be good for you, purified water, good, spring water, good. Your tap water is not as good, even if you have a, a might have a, a something on that. But, um, so that is a really, really uh -huh. Do you have anything that you'd like me to test in uh, particular? Uh, this has been fascinating because so far, everything you test is a spot on high eat. How wonderful. That's the crazy thing. <laughs> See, you're using your so, inner knower, your own intuition. That's, that's fascinating to me. It's, um, I always liked, to be honest, I wish I could take credit for the intuition. There were very few things that I, I had to factor out because I – never liked sugar, not since I was a child, and I was never drawn to sweets and cakes, never ever. Uh, I was never a meat person. Mm -hmm. The issue I had was with the bread, because I love, love, love bread, being a European gal, but I would get, um, interestingly enough, I would get bloated, except for sourdough. Mm -hmm. Sourdough, I do well, so that I find it fascinating that we tested that and that came in well. It and does. I tried to eat gluten-free bread made um, with rice, and rice came in well. So that's that's wonderful. Yes, very that's that is fascinating. I love it. So, have them uh, bring the bread over with some nice olive oil. Let's and you know uh, some spices with that, oh, and I truly love, it. love and enjoy it. Okay, Thank but good so good sourdough, and a lot of places are making sourdough. Good sourdough now. Yes. Yes, they do. Well, thank you. I'm so impressed. Even my dog agrees. Sorry about that. <laughs> you but, can uh, test for dogs. You can test food for animals. Oh, they interesting. They do that all the time. So good to know. Well, thank you. I am so impressed with your talent and with your ability to, you know, communicate it. And I'm very, very happy with the reading. So thank, thank you, you for that you. reassurance. Thank you, Lana. Lovely yeah. to meet you. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye. Uh -huh. Bye. 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 That was really amazing. Interesting, interesting. So quick break here. You're listening to Dare to Dream podcast. And as my gift to you, for those of you who are interested in a business, have a business, want to build it, if I'm gifting you with three months free on the Thinkific business platform. That's the place where you can create, market, and sell and deliver your own online courses. It's so amazing. You can do webinars there, affiliate work there. It's an all-in-one stop and it's drag and drop, so it's so easy. You can get the tools to turn your expertise into a money-making career. My gift to you, three months free, go to thnk.com cc slash deb that's t h n k dot cc slash deb for your free subscription and if you are just tuning into the show this is debbie dashinger on dare to dream radio and 
video and podcasts. So some of you are listening. And if you want to watch this, go to youtube.com slash Debbie Dashinger. Lana Nelson is the author of the book, The Food Codes, Intuitive Eating for Every Body. <laughs> so if you thought it was fascinating what you just saw her do with Juja. Uh, you can get your own reading if you want to work with her directly. And of course, this is many, many pages of material and details about what's happening in your body, or you can learn how to do it on your own. She gives you all the specifics. Boy, there's a lot in this book. And Juja, thanks for coming on the show. Thank you. I enjoyed it very much. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank Bye. you. Uh, so I just, um, before we, another guest comes on, I have so many questions for you. So we'll see how much we can cover because this is so fascinating, all of this. I myself, uh, I hate to point it out because I really like to look good on camera, but I have been in distress for easily, probably going on three weeks, something, but something started. I was actually speaking in an event. And I just thought, oh, it'll go away. And it was like this terrible itching on my throat. Some, I don't know if it's a hive or a rash, but it started to spread, didn't go away. Instead it said, we know we'll spread, we'll get her attention. Uh -huh. And I've tried everything. I flipped foods, taken out foods, only had protein, only this, only that, like mamma mia. And um, yeah, and more. So clearly I'm having some kind of reaction. I would love for you to let me know through your magic if you can <laughs> read on what's going on here. Yes, I will. Okay, so when something is coming out in your skin, it can it can be it can be internally, um, it can be an allergic reaction or something like that. Sometimes it is your body just not processing through. If you think about your detox pathways, they're your kidneys, it's your digestive system, it's uh, your skin. So your skin actually, and your lungs, your breathing, of course, you're breathing about 70% release of toxins. But I'm going to test you right now. And because we're talking about food, let's ask, have you had a food that you've eaten um, that is that has bothered you? Yes. Okay. Let's ask, was this food, uh, you mentioned, you mentioned um, it was at this conference or whatever. Is this something that you ate at the, that you ate there? Yes. Because sometimes you could touch a food and it could bother it you. So, you know, because problem. you're, just so you know, I, I had it yes. before, but it, and I thought it would go away, but it was still very prevalent while I was there. Okay. So I was just going to ask, is this before the conference? And I was just thinking that it was yes. Okay. So do we need to know more than that? And we don't. So asking this inner knower, do we need to know more? No. So do you have, what my intuition is telling me uh, is that you have a food intolerance. And is this a food intolerance? Yes. Okay. So just looking at, um, at a list of foods, is this a vegetable type of food? No. Is this a fruit type of food? I'm testing yes. And looking down my list, is it one of my, is it one of the foods on my list? And the answer is yes. Is it, I'm just going to go from the A to C column. Is this from A to C? Yes. Is it uh, African mangoes? Is it apple, apricot, avocado? No. Banana and my, my knower, my get in there. Um, is this day, is this, uh, is this banana? Is this banana? Yes. Okay. Is this an apricot? No. Is this an avocado? No. Is this a banana? A banana has bothered you. Maybe something that had banana in it or um, so an intolerance can actually be from even like several months ago. An intolerance is mm -hmm. something that your body reacted to and not, and it's so a particular banana would be not that you are allergic to bananas or that every banana you eat would cause a problem. And let's ask, is there an underlying cause to that? And the actual thing is no. So what I can see, and I'm testing with my intuition, is your digestive system releasing? No. 
Okay, so do you have a digestive problem? Yes. So what I'm just testing is, so let's just test your digestion from your mouth down through your stomach and then from there, now I'm seeing actually, is your liver happy? It is not. Did you have a problem with your liver? Yes. Okay. Is your gallbladder happy? It is not. No. So in the liver gallbladder area, there's a little, there's some ducting called the cystic duct and different, uh, some ducting in there. So is this flowing properly? No. So right now I'm going to, and it looked like you were kind of itching. Is this itching right now? It's not as bad as it's been, but sure. I, I do. Okay. Yeah. I could I'm going to give you. So we can clear this intolerance, but I'm going to give you a little exercise and let's see if this helps with the exercise, uh, with the, the rash or whatever. Now it's called the 30 second gut flush. Mm -hmm. And I have a video that you can see on my website or on YouTube, the 30 second gut flush. I'm going to stand up a little bit here and it's right below the ribs just brush downward about 10 times on the right side, 10 times in the center, and you don't even really have to touch your body, but 10 times on the left side as well. So brush down and get in there, right to left, and just brush downward on your skin. You might feel or hear some gurgling even. Mm -hmm. And so what we're going to do now is how we clear, let's asking, is your liver becoming more happy, not yet. Just on that right side, really get in and brush. What I've noticed with my clients and over the past uh, 25 years, actually been using this with clients, with patients, uh, with my husband's practice, and it helps to balance the body. It helps the digestion, the digestive system. It also helps uh, to balance your energy, like right to left energy, connect brain and so, so forth. So take a nice deep breath in and out right now. And let's ask, is your liver happy? It's much more happy. Is your gallbladder happy? It's much more happy. Is your cystic duct not so much? So a little more brushing on the right side under your rib and just lovingly just imagine this whole area is opening up and a nice deep breath in or two okay and now let's just bring your body into balance and here's a good way to balance your body just take your hand either one of your hands and run front to back across the top of your head this is actually um, Dr. Brad Nelson uses this in the emotion code and body code. This will bring your body back to balance. And our intention is bringing that body back to balance and releasing and clearing that intolerance. So there That's you very go. Very nurturing. It is wonderful. Yeah. It, it just sends a message via your governing meridian, which runs from the bottom of your tailbone up and over to the top of your lip. There's a problem on board here and let's get this balanced pretty much. So take a deep breath and just feel into your skin, into that. You might even touch a little bit on your neck and see if there's a change. There may or may not be. I don't know. I'm going by intuition because I get a yes. I okay. know my skin is raw because yes, you know you touched been scratching it. Scratching okay. such thin skin for three weeks, it's unhappy. So I yes. guess that's not of, of right now. That's of the past few weeks. Yes. But it's just like in asking my skin, frankly, right here, are you are you better? I'm getting a yes. Like okay. More well, it might take a little further for that, but. Um, keep doing that 30 second gut flush. You can actually do the gut flush while you're standing, sitting, lying down, close on, close off. You can do it for animals. I've done it on a horse before. I've uh, worked on a lot of animals and then you would just brush their back with the intention that you're doing the gut flush and they love it. So yeah. Uh, babies, you can do it on babies. Those babies that have, you know, they cry and they, they hold their little legs up and they scream with digestive problems. A little, you don't even have to touch their body. Just balance that and 
gas will start to pass and the baby will just start to um, calm down. So nice. Well, anyway, thank you. And um, I'm we'll see how that works next. at the end. Just mm -hmm. let me know how you're doing at the end too. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. I appreciate that. I feel, I, I feel very relaxed. I'll tell you right now. I feel really good. Um, we've got Rob. Rob is here for uh, a reading and Let's see, start the video and unmute. And Rob, welcome <laughs> here to Timo. It's kind of loud where you are. We might ask you to go to a quieter place if you can. Um, this welcome. is about as quiet as it's gonna get for an office building. Okay, well, welcome to Dare to Dream. We may do this quickly, because I don't know how noisy we can take it, but um, Rob, meet Lana, Lana, meet Rob. Hi, Rob. Hi, Lana. Hi, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So, Rob, do you have any problems with food or any things that, that bother you? Is there anything in particular you would like me to, to test today? Sure. I, I don't really have any types of food that bother me. I like almost all types of food. Uh, I guess if I have anything that I would like to change about my uh, physical assimilation of food, is the fact that I uh, work out pretty hard at the gym, do a fair bit of uh, you know, cables, weights, hiking, and stay pretty active. And uh, for various reasons, you know, vanity not being the least, I would like to build more muscle. And okay. also, of course, it's good to be strong as well in many aspects of life. So I have a lot of trouble building muscle. So I'm extremely lean, and I think I should probably have more muscle for the amount of uh, working out that I do. So I wonder if I might have a, uh, a protein assimilation issue. All right, that is a great question, okay. And the very cool thing about using the food codes method is you can, you can test if you have a, um, a program, if you would like to gain more muscle, if you would like to lose fat or whatever, you have a 10K coming up, you can test exactly for that. Or you have, you know, exams coming up. You can do testing for those things. So let's ask for gaining muscle, gaining lean muscle. And um, let's test first, do you have an assimilation problem? Uh, is there a hidden assimilation problem? I'm testing that you're assimilating. You're assimilating what you eat about a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So about a nine on a scale of one to 10. Uh, assimilating seems to be okay. Maybe it is the type of food that you need to incorporate. And also we just did a, uh, we did a gut flush. We did a, um, a little video uh, example of the 30 second gut flush for assimilation I, I suggest doing that every single day it will balance your organs and gland for that assimilation so let's ask for muscle building and your best health in muscle building uh, do you need did you have any top fruits and yes, so I'm just going down quickly my uh, figs as a top uh, fruit for you. Uh, figs are, Crazy. so fig as a good food for you. Okay, uh, grapes, no, guava, jackfruit, lemon, no, lime, yes. So lime over lemon. Uh, it's interesting, but they have different frequencies. Okay, um, let's see. So that is, so pineapple, plantain, prune, rhubarb, uh, any berries? Yes, okay. So let's see, I'm just going down a list of like cranberries, elderberries, goji, huckleberry, mulberry, strawberry. Is strawberry a top food for you? Okay, so strawberries would be a top food. Um, any of the melon family? No. So interesting. So vegetables, do you have any top vegetables for Bulking up muscles. Um, this is going down. Uh, let's see. Artichokes, arugula, asparagus, beet greens, bok choy, broccoli. Is broccoli a top food for you? And the answer is a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so like it or not, broccoli is a good food for you. Um, cabbage, no celery, no collard greens, no corn, no cucumber. Um, most of the lettuces as top muscle building, uh, Swiss 
chard, spinach, spinach, okay? Spinach as a good top food for you. It's a five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Think of Popeye. There you go. Popeye and spinach. Okay, so others, uh, olives, uh, the onion family. How is the onion family? Garlic and the onion family for muscle building, not, not top. Uh, how is squash for muscle building? Pretty good. Acorn, yes. Banana, yes. Butternut, yes. So those are the yellow, uh, wonderful yellow vegetables. And that time of year now, too. So yellow squash, uh, sweet potatoes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So those being very, very good for you. White potatoes, not as good, but the yellow potato. And the yellow potato is about a five, but a sweet potato or a yam, about the same. So those are good. Uh, let's ask any root vegetables for muscle building. Not so much. And that doesn't mean you should stay away from these other types of vegetables. It's just we're pinpointing muscle building foods, okay? So legumes, yes, okay. So things like beans, um, adzuki beans, no, black beans, cannoli beans, chickpea, garbanzo beans, uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Garbanzos as a ten for you, okay. Uh, cranberry beans, great northern, green beans, about middle of the road, lentils. Let's check lentils. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. So lentils, not as good. Uh, red beans, uh, mushrooms, no sea vegetables. Okay, so let's look at uh, dairy, like cow dairy. Are you vegan or um, vegetarian? I'm a proud carnar carnivore. Okay, all right. So let's look at, let's say, cow, dairy, cheese, etc. Dairy for building muscle for you is a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, yeah. so uh, like regular cow whole milk is not so good. Do you need it fermented? Yes. Okay, so let's say like a uh, uh, buttermilk, sort of kefir, yes. Um, so goat and cow, yes. So those are all good for you. I would do the fermented uh, sour cream, even sour cream. So fermented for you. And um, do you have any cheese that is cheese an okay food for you? Yes. On a whole, cheese is a five and uh, more your better like let's just look at Dubliner that one tests good a lot of times one two three four five so cheese can be good for you too but uh, the fermented fermented dairy is a muscle building for you so uh, any grains uh, any grains for muscle building for you uh, let's just check sourdough bread for you is a one two not that you shouldn't at, at, so muscle building it's a two but is sourdough bread good for your body at this time it's about one two three four five so just in the so-so um, as far as rice, uh, rice, is there uh, a particular rice that would help you with the muscle building? And yes, basmati rice, yes, black rice, yes, brown rice, yes. So rice being very good and wild rice being very good for you. Um, also, garbanzo bean or chickpea flour. You can make some fabulous things with chickpea flour, garbanzo bean flour. Um, just checking very fast, nuts. Nuts on a scale of one to 10, about a nine to 10 for you. Okay, so almonds, Brazils, uh, not so much cashews, coconut, no. Pecans, no. Macadamia, yes. Peanuts, no. Pistachios, yes. Walnuts, yes. So nuts as a good and good fats for you as well. Um, seeds, just oils, particularly high oils for you. Any of those? Yes. Avocado oil? Yes. Beef fat tallow? Beef fat, with it, since you're a carnivore, eating the fat is a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So a 10 on a scale of 1 to 10. Butter is a 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Butter and ghee, very good fats for you. Uh, fish oil? is not so much. Um, 
let's see, um, and Lana, pork. This, yes, I, we're sorry, probably sorry. about the end here. No, okay, we're sorry. Close to the end, and I want <laughs> I'm to just... be sure. And if you just want to give him, like, you know, a couple of quick, okay, uh, quick tips. Protein. protein makes protein. So meat in general for you for building muscle is a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine to 10. Uh, not so much fish or seafood, meat and meat broth and um, those some good oils is what I'm testing really fast. Got away from me there, thank you. Wonderful, well, uh, that's very encouraging because that's mostly what I already do, but I'll, uh, I'll keep those in mind and concentrate on those types of foods. I do love fish, but I'll gravitate more toward uh, the four-footed uh, animals of the world. Fish is good for you, but uh, it's just not the meat, pro the, the muscle building that you, um, it's probably super duper good for your brain, so don't, uh, don't stop eating fish. All right, thank you so much, Lana. You bet. Thanks, Rob. All right, sweetheart. I'm going to get back to work. Take care. Bye. Bye bye. Amazing. Well, uh, so I'm a little jealous. <laughs> I just want to say, <laughs> like, that doesn't seem fair that somebody has, um, and Rob, there you go. So it doesn't seem fair. Like, he, he, you're talking about someone's body who's like, yes, your body loves this and this and this. I, have such a sensitive body. I'm really over it. And I love food, like love mm -hmm. food. But I have, I just have to be so careful. And even when I'm careful, I have stuff like this happen, or my digestion will break down until I can build it back up. So I have to say, when I listen to like this reading with Rob, who's trying to put on weight and mu muscle, and yeah. his body is like, yum, yum, yum. It's a little bit, um, well, I guess the real question is, how can I have something like that? Just keep doing your food codes, okay? Just keep uh, following the food codes. And you can use it in many ways. You don't have to use it as, I, this, is, this is all I can eat. Do your best, bless the rest. But you can, uh, a good way to follow it is to just eat, uh, sometimes to start following it is to find out what your worst foods are. What foods do I need to stay away from? And start there. Because a lot of people say, you know, it, it's so much like dieting to me and to just like baby steps into it, clearing emotions and things like that, of course, would be recommended. Um, and just bringing yourself into balance. Okay, this is not a diet. This is not a diet. This is not a diet. I can do this. No, it's, it's a lifestyle. So stay away from those things that are not good for you. On your, on your food plans that we had tested for you before, um, banana had not, you know, did not test good for you as a good food. So stay away from, start with that. Stay away from those foods that, that don't test good for you. Okay. And just so folks know, with the sheet that I received, if you work with Lana too, that, you know, as she's saying, not forever. So you do this and she'll tell you, I guess she'll muscle test and tell you how much time. And then you can go back and be retested and introduce new foods. So the body changes. I want to bring in, because I read this in the book and I thought it was so cool, muscle testing also can be done for supplements. It can be done for sunshine, for sunscreen brand, for grocery shopping, uh, for animals. So this is really comprehensive. Um, and if you want to get a copy of her 30 second gut flush, what we were just doing to take out the garbage and release the excess weight from your body, go to the foodcodes.com slash gut dash flush, and you can get your copy, your viewing, and be able to start doing this on your own. So this is Dare to Dream, Lana. Yes. What do you next Dare to Dream? What are your future dreams and goals? Oh, that is so good. Well, I have a huge family. Okay. I have 12 kids and a parcel of grandkids. And uh, it's a wonderful blended family. And my dare to dream is vacationing with them, is seeing them as often as I want, uh, is feeding them, uh, and is getting together and uh, living life good with lots of good food. So those are my dreams. Well, that's a beautiful dream. And you have like 33 grandchildren. Is that right? I do. I know. That just blows people out of the water. 
<laughs> Follow the food codes and look like Lana. <laughs> and have, have a whole gaggle of grandchildren and look amazing. Yeah. Well, my husband and I married 27 years ago, I think now, 26, 27 years ago, and we combined a family of each of us having six children. So that's how that happened. And uh, we have a happily ever after. I, you can read about it in the book. <laughs> Very nice. What do you want to tell people here at the end? I want to tell them to stop judging food. Just stop. Stop judging others. Stop judging yourself and relax. Breathe with it. Eat what, uh, stop, stop eating when you're full. Don't eat when you're not hungry. Just uh, follow your inner wisdom because as you do that, little by little by little, you will know. You will know exactly what your body needs and you will, you will be feeling good in your skin. Isn't that our goal? Feel good in yeah. our skin? Because we're in it anyway. Yes. <laughs> so why not feel amazing fully in yeah. it and enjoying being in it as well? Yes. And so, so, so you can also help people like you help Rob with the bodybuilding and the weight gaining. You can help people with lose weight or help people with health issues, et cetera. You can, any of that, yeah, you definitely can. Even you can help yourself by, by doing, just following the book. You can help yourself with any of those issues too. You bet. There's, that is my goal is to help you help yourself. There's a quote from your book I love, which is most adults have tried one, two, or several diets. Most are based on a cookie cutter approach. One reason cookie cutter diets don't work is because people are not cookies. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was very good and clever. Yes. Lana, thank you so much for coming on and sharing your brilliance today on the show. Thank you for having me. Thank you for your listeners. And people uh, could go out and get the book, uh, Amazon, and at your local bookstores. It's the Food Codes. It's really amazing, and it does teach you everything and, and has many of these great exercises as well, besides being able to self-test. And I end with these quotes. W.C. Field said, I cook with wine. Sometimes I even add it to the food. <laughs> and Orson Welles said, my doctor told me I had to stop throwing intimate dinners for four unless there were three other people. Thank you for sharing your brilliance today. You're amazing. And next week on the show, I am featuring Simone Butler. She is an expert astrologer guide with more than 30 years of experience in helping people. And she's also going to talk about astro feng shui and astro locality, where you should be living, working, where in the whole world works best for you. Tune in to this enlightening transformation conversation all the weeks ensuing on Dare to Dream with Debbie Dashinger. Remember, subscribe, leave a five-star review, and the secret of success is always having the courage to begin in the first place. Thank you so much for joining us today on the show.